Loomis. How'd you know it was me? Oh, I can tell. You ain't into none of that spooky stuff, are you? <laughs> Talking to dead people and reading minds. No. Why? You have something to hide? Who, me? I know enough to do anything real weird yet. <laughs> Mr. Fish will appreciate that. Why are we gonna get some heat around here so I can come back in? Well, the man's trying to fix the furnace now. It's warm over at Harold's. Harold? My best friend. The one that's going to camp. Harold's going to camp? That sounds wonderful. It is be Harold Jackson. I ain't going nowhere. Am I? I'm afraid camp costs a lot of money, Loomis. Anything that's fun costs money. Well, that's not always true. Have you ever heard that song, The Best Things in Life Are Free? I've got it on a record. I'm gonna play it for you. They get our record away for nothing. Well. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, Julia, what do you want to do tonight? I don't know. You got anything particular you want to do? I like to go to a movie, but I can't find one that you don't have to be 18 to get into. The only thing like that is Bambi. That's 18, too. Look. <laughs> hey, I don't think it's a cartoon anymore. <laughs> Listen, you're gonna have to pick me up tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm having some problems with my car. Yeah, like it ain't been bought yet. <laughs> no, 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 that was the TV. It gets loud. You gotta smack it in the side every now and then. <laughs> Are you children keeping yourselves warm? Oh, yeah. We haven't burned anything yet, if that's what you mean. No, that's not what I meant. I'm afraid it's no use, lady. I'm gonna have to order a whole new motor. That may take, uh, three to four days. Isn't there anything we can do? You got a fireplace? No. Then I'd move. No, we can't do that. Look, that's the only thing I could suggest. Can I use your phone? Sure. Thanks. Well, uh, yeah, I'll have the car next week. Don't worry about it. Don't worry, Mrs. Fish. It'll be all right. You think so? Things always have a way of working themselves out. You think so? I think we should all learn to think that way. But then I'm just a little kid, you know. You think so? Hey, don't I see you hanging around the schoolyard? Who, me? No. Oh, my mistake. Hey, 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 hey. Shh. Can't you see him on the phone? <laughs> Fish. It's cold in here. The furnace went out. What happened with the money? We couldn't get reimbursed for any of our bills until the department's auditor goes over the budget. What's wrong with the furnace? The motor went out. It'll take several days to get a new one. Hey, Jilly, there's a monster flick playing out the twin. Get away from that phone. I gotta make some calls. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I ain't giving up my place in line. Who are you? He's the repairman. He's gonna fix the furnace. Here's the bill. I can't pay this. In that case, you can use the phone next. <laughs> this house belongs to the city. They'll pay for it. Hey, what do you think I am? Some yokel from out of town? <laughs> uh, listen, what do you say we all try to keep warm by singing some campfire songs? <laughs> oh, Charlie, um... How about some coffee? Now? I don't... Oh, okay. We'll sing later. All right, Julie. It's all set. All we need now is a little dough. Oh, by the way, 
You're gonna have to turn off the water tonight, too. The water? The pipes. They'll freeze and burst. <laughs> Mr. Fish, cover doll up, please. Get away. <laughs> What'd I tell you? I think I seen some foam around the mouth. <laughs> How can you stay here without water? How can you stay here with water? <laughs> Phil, I'd like to talk to you. Alone. What's the matter? Well, it's about Diane. Diane? Who's Diane? The one over there in front of the television set. Oh, huh. She never bothers me. That's the point, Phil. There's a time bomb in there just waiting to explode. Now that would bother me. That foreign stuff isn't reliable. Hey, don't be such a gloomy Gus. Oh, my God. Fish, we'll work out our money problems. Bernice, you don't understand. If these debts keep piling up, they'll have to close this place. Close it? Yeah. And that's the best part of it. What would happen to the children? What will happen to me? I paid for some of the stuff from our money. The city owes me money. Well, they'll give it back to us. Don't worry. Bernice, the city has no money. I have no money. We, the city, and I have no money. Did you ever hear that saying, I was sad because I had no shoes? And then one day, I met a man who had no feet. You give him any money? <laughs> hey, Victor, old buddy. Hey, I'm broke, too. <laughs> hey, what are you jumping around for? I'm trying to keep warm. Only fat people don't feel cold. <laughs> hey, uh, Victor, what? Do you remember when I told you about aggression? I mean, find a, a creative way to let go of it. Yeah, I'm gonna rearrange his face. <laughs> do it with painting, like Picasso. I'm gonna do it with my fist, like Marciano. <laughs> Poetry, it's a good start. Hey, will you hold it down? I'm trying to watch Wild Kingdom. I, uh... I see you're interested in the study of wildlife. Yeah. That's good. And I'm also waiting for this guy to lose a finger. Look at him stick his hand in that alligator's mouth. Well, you know, that's, that's a fine example of confidence and trust. Hey, what'd you do that for? Uh, stand up. What? Stand up. What am I supposed to do? Catch me. What? Catch me! Oh! <laughs> Now, that was trust. You see, I trusted you enough to know you would catch me. What if I didn't? Well, the point is, you did. See, I trusted you, and you felt that. Now, I want you to try it. I'll catch you. I don't want. <laughs> Man, I trusted you. Now, you have to trust me. If I fall, I'll break my neck. You're not going to break your neck. Now, turn around. Fall. I don't want. Fall, Diane. I don't want. Diane, I beg of you. This could be the crossroads of your life. Now, four. Oh, oh. Hey, it worked. Sure 
heard that, you see? That was fun. Sure. Boy, was I scared. But you see, that's only the beginning. Yeah. Diane, there's a whole big world out there just waiting for you to see. You... Listen, why don't you go with me to the museum? The museum? Yeah. Yeah. Terrific. Let's go. There are some fantastic exhibits. In fact, I was reading... Hey, Mr. The... Fish, I trust you. But... <laughs> What did she say? <laughs> All right, quit that fighting. We ain't fighting. We cold and bored. Well, I'm old and bored. <laughs> and I don't want to see that stuff. Do something else. Then give us some money. Keep punching. <laughs> I can go to camp only for $150. What is he talking about? His friend Harold is going to camp, and Loomis wants to go too. And I wasn't sure we could afford it. I'm sure we can't afford it. Yeah. No camp. His best friend Harold is going. That can be disappointing. Well, don't make any more friends. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> Why is he always locking himself up in places? Loomis? Loomis? You'll freeze to death down there. Phil, talk to him. No more talking. When he gets cold enough, he'll come out. Fish. Fish, it's not only cold down there. There are rats in that basement. Maybe he won't bother them. <laughs> I have never been so humiliated in my life. She brought me back. She brought me back because I didn't have any money. She acted like nobody in the world ever lost their wallet before. <laughs> Mr. Fish, I need some money. Now, I'm not leaving the house until I get it. I'll be in my room. Hi, everybody. He must have his own key. How was your trip to the museum? Oh, it was wonderful. Well, I, I, I think we've both been enriched a little by the experience. You must have had a wonderful time. Oh, yeah, Charlie explained everything to me. That's why I want to have his baby. <laughs> Coco? Anybody? <laughs> Phil, look, I, I can understand you being upset. I, I really can. Thank him for me, Venice. <laughs> Phil, he's only trying to help Diane. To give her some direction. To put some other interests in her life. You ever heard of stamp collecting? <laughs> Her life was becoming absorbed by that television tube. I mean, so much so that she was becoming an extension of the TV herself. McLuhan put it well when he said the medium is the message. Is that the tall kid? Sorry, Loomis, but we ain't got no food that we could slip under the door. I don't understand this stuff about a baby. It's just that I appreciate Charlie being so nice. Can't you just say thanks? Victor, is Loomis all right? Sure. Hey, Loomis, breathe for Mrs. Fish. No, I ain't breathing for nobody. He's all right. Uh, Jelly, Victor, um, could I talk to Diane alone for a minute? Sure. Sure. Me and Victor are trying to think of some ways to get a hold of some money. Hey, Julie, what do you suppose they pay us for a pint of your blood? <laughs> Victor! Don't worry, Mrs. Fish. They don't like needles. <laughs> I guess you really had a nice time with Charlie at the museum. Yeah. 
Diane, I was just about your age when I fell in love with a man named David. He was my first male teacher, and he was the kindest, the sweetest man I'd ever seen. And I wanted to marry him, too. So Mr. Fish was number two, huh? Uh, in a way. <laughs> um, I fell in love with a lot of other men before I met Mr. Fish. At least I thought I did. Well, what happened with David? Oh, everything was going beautifully until I decided to tell him how I felt. He was just stringing you along, huh? No. He just didn't want me to misunderstand his kindness and, and considerateness and, and attentiveness to me in class. There was a limit to how much he was allowed to teach me. You know, this is kind of like the talks they have on Leave it to Beaver. Beaver's father was Mr. Cleaver, and he was always so nice and kind and sweet and polite. And That's right. He made me throw up once. <laughs> it's called transference. What I attempted to do what was to transfer Diane's total absorption in television to, to a more panoramic view of the entire spectrum of life. Sounds like something you do. <laughs> Point one. She only thinks she wants a baby. In fact, she's simply overcompensated. You know, prior to this, she was an underachiever. During this, she was underage. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's talk. Let's not. Go on, please. Go ahead. Now, I'm old enough to realize some of the economic restrictions of living in a dump like this. But I'm afraid my position is becoming untenable. I'm becoming unable to cope with some of the pressures brought on by my peer group. You've been stinking books in here. Go on, Mike. Now, I'm a normal, healthy young man. Sure. And as such, I'm in need of the company provided by normal, very healthy young ladies. <laughs> However, without funding, I'm being ostracized. Ostracized? Right, by my fellow young people. Primarily the female variety. Now, in short, I gotta get money. Get recognition, get acceptance. Get away. <laughs> up to me. Is that kid still down there? He needs attention, Phil. He'll need medical attention when I'm through. <laughs> Fish, he won't answer. I'll handle this. You in there, talk to me. And open the door. No! One out of two ain't bad. <laughs> Blue mess. Please, please, let me handle this. Open the door! No! Talk to him. Hi there. Hi. Diane, I, I'd like to talk to you about today. Y you see, we all have certain emotional responses to the various stimuli we're bombarded with every day. And, uh, these responses sometimes remove that delicate balance that always exists between fact and illusion. I mean, sometimes we ascribe feelings to other people that, that don't really feel that way at all. And the only way to know their true attitudes and motivations is to ask them outright. Like me, for instance. If you really want to know something, if you're really confused, just ask me. Is that Algo Ray? <laughs> Is that Algo Ray? Uh, no. No, that's Maxie Rosenblum. <laughs> oh. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Fish, you won't come out. All right, all right, we'll get a locksmith. I knew this would cost me money. How much? I don't know. Well, whatever it costs, I'll do it for half. What's the deal? Got a bobby pin? You think he can do it? He can do it, believe me. <laughs> I think the color's blue. Oh, baby. Still want to go to camp. Camps are filthy. <laughs> Dirt leaves all over the place. Besides, if you think it's cold down there, imagine what it's like to be in the woods. It's not cold in August. August? That's when camp starts. You started all this whining in the winter for August? <laughs> Put him back in the basement. All right, Mr. Fish. How about my money? I figured 10 bucks is fair. I'm not giving you any money. What? We made a deal. I got the kid out of the basement before he froze to death. The kid's life's got to be worth 10 bucks. It is. <laughs> Give him the kid. <laughs> Eating from this oven will cost us a fortune in gifts. It's the only thing that's going to keep us warm. <laughs> Remember Hansel and Gretel? <laughs> what? Get it. Move over. Hi, hey, would you some... stop pushing? Oh, come on, come on, man. All right. All right, All right just... Settle down, everybody. Hey, underprivileged kids should not be kept in such an atmosphere. Now everybody shut up. No talking, no snoring, no dreaming. <laughs> it's the worst day I've had in my life. And I deserve to go out with silence. <laughs> Turn off the lights. <laughs> <laughs> 